Good afternoon. It's Chris Bacon, brain injury guy, disabled Canadian. Today is uh, June 23rd, Thursday. It's uh, 101 in the afternoon here in Kitchener. Um, this installment. <clears throat> I finally received correspondence from the Justice Minister and Attorney General of Canada in response to my many inquiries. If, if you need to know what's going on, just look at my other uh, videos. I'm really tired. I'm just... I'm finished. I'm done. This is abuse. This is beyond abuse. This is crimes against humanity, and I am so disappointed in government and all the liars and all the people in my private life who say that they well they say what they say and here I am 12 years later not a word written down not one single syllable in my defense because as soon as I start showing them the evidence the only thing the abiding principle is we don't want to know we're not going to tell anybody and we're going to silence you anyway so much for Canadian citizenship so much for being included in society oh we're included all right but not in the way that you're we're just scum we are able to be done with however they want and nobody gives a shit nobody I've written this down I've done videos. I've posted my fucking life on you fucking too. Nothing. I'm supposed to have faith in somebody? Am I really? Am I supposed to have faith in you? Faith in my fellow man? The way I've been treated after 12 years, I don't think I have a fellow man anywhere other than those who are made to suffer in silence, suppressed and oppressed and obstructed, denied, deflected and obstructed by this, our democratic government. Citizenship isn't worth the paper it's written on. And I am forced into a decision that I don't want to make. I love Canada. I... I love everything about this country. There it once was. It's not that anymore. If there's one thing that my 12 years of experience in real time has taught me, it's all bullshit. Don't believe in a fucking thing. Anyway, so here's our representation in action because, like I said, I've written it down when I can't, as much as I can, in spite of my disability. I've sent videos. I've posted my life to YouTube. I've gone on corners and, and put up signs and talked to people and yelled at people and watched people walk by as if because they don't want to know. They actually look away from you. There's a sign there that says there's something you need to know. And they, they're so well trained in their ignorance that they go, no, I don't know. There's something happening there. I just don't want to know. You're all enablers. You think just by giving a donation to disabled or human rights somewhere absolves you of your responsibility as a Canadian citizen or a citizen anywhere? You know why they'll always win? Because you don't give a shit enough about each other to fucking make a difference. They've already won. You are disengaged. The most connected society in the history of man, and they're so disengaged and so brainwashed into cognitive dissonance. That's where you just go, I can't take anymore. I'm not listening unless it has something to do with me directly. And guess what? I guess patient safety and harm of patients 
the fact that non-medical personnel are to have taken over the, our, our patient-centered care and are being protected by the police, by the attorney general. They're all protecting each other. This is collaborative law. So they collaborative lawed me right out of my rights, even to representation. So we're in a, we're in a, a mental health court with no evidence of the mental health against me because it shows they're wrong to it. The law, the, that's because Crown Attorney decides what is evidence, especially when it comes to wrongdoing by persons in power, positions of power, especially with the stuff that's been going on around here in Kitchener with the police department, or I should say the Gestapo, uh, you know, because they're running it like the Gestapo. There's no difference between this and, and Germany. I feel like I'm living in Germany, especially the part where people are walking by like there's nothing going on. As long as it's not me or mine, okay, well, I'm, I'm okay, so you just shut the fuck up there. I don't want to hear it because then it blows my bubble, it bursts my bubble of my rose-colored world where everything's safe and the government's here for you and, oh, the law protects me, you know? Oh, you know, you keep living like that. My eyes have been open. Enough. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. Not after 12 years. And especially this last year. Because I, here I'm sitting there, all I got to do is get it in a court of law. That's all I got to do. Well, here I am. Here they are. I don't think I could have demonstrated it any better that this is systemic and nationwide across every system of rep so-called representation in Canada, especially when it comes to government wrongdoing. It's a protectionist racket, racketeering. The reason why they got rid of the mob is because they don't like competition. Plus, they needed to get their tools so that they could use it for their own purposes. You know, you can you can keep walking around in your little rose-colored world or in Canada, or you can start educating yourself. Personally, I think I'm out of time because I am personally ready to resign my citizenship. There's nothing more than a license for them to have medical experimentation on me. Just, I'm their plaything. I've got no rights and I've got nobody protecting me. I am not safe. But anyway, and, and this is proof. There's no such thing as leadership. It's all bullshit. So here we go. I'm going to read you the letter I got back. Finally, I mean, uh, again, I wrote her, I wrote everybody in government that has anything to do with this on every level since March 26th. Today is almost the three-month anniversary. In three days, it'll be the three-month, April, May, June. Yeah, three-month anniversary since I sent out at correspondence. And there's been other correspondence since then. And trying to talk with attorney generals and, and lawyers and courts and everything here. And finally, Friday, June 17th, which is just shy of three months, of actually sending it to her, I finally get a ministerial correspondence, and I, I thought I'd share this with everybody. Okay, so here's the answer that I got. On Friday, June 17, 2016, at 2.26 p.m., ministerial correspondence unit mail out from ministerial correspondence unit hyphen mail out at justice.gc.ca wrote, Dear Mr. Bacon, on behalf of the Honorable Jody Wilson Raybould, Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada, I acknowledge receipt of your correspondence concerning your personal situation. I regret the delay in responding. As Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada, Minister Wilson Raybould is mandated to provide legal advice only to the federal government. I hope you will understand that for this reason, she is not able to provide legal advice to members of the public or to become involved in the situation you describe. She's not allowed to be involved in human rights or the administration of justice in Canada. Similarly, neither department officials nor members of her staff are in a position to help resolve the issues, the issues you raise. It may be helpful. For, 
it may be it may be helpful for you to know that the administration of justice is the responsibility of the provincial governments therefore if you have not already done so you may wish to write the appropriate provincial authorities please note that Minister Wilson Raybould has no authority over provincial matters period thank you for writing Yours sincerely, A backslash manager, Ministerial Correspondence Unit. Okay. So that's her response. She's not responsible for human rights in Canada. She's not responsible for the Constitution. She's not responsible for overseeing how every other Attorney General in Ontario does their job. That they are in line with the Constitution. This is what they're claiming in this letter. Uh, human rights is not her position. To ensure that the UN protocol on disability rights is not her job, right? To make sure it's put into the law schools where it's taught to every lawyer is not her job. So. Like I said, it's this thing about pass the buck because it's she just dismissed it. Dismissed every issue I raised on behalf of every Canadian. So as far as Jody Wilson-Raybould, honorable Jody Wilson-Raybould is, is, is concerned, human rights in Canada is not her job. Administration of justice in the provinces is not her job. Making sure that they are not promoting crimes against humanity is not her job. It is not her job to make sure that disabled people who cannot write it down for themselves, whether it's about government wrongdoing or not, have a way to write it down. There is no means for a person with a disability who can't write it down when the government does not wish to write it down has a means to have it presented in any way, shape, or form, and usually has it deliberately run out of the uh, required times limits that are put on it. Matter of fact, Ontario implemented six months that you have to file a human rights complaint. Nine months to file a human rights complaint against or uh, complaint against uh, police in Ontario or any legal system. So they all got time limits on it, and this is why I'm saying it's deny, deflect, and obstruct because all they have to do is get you to that time limit, and most of it's like, yeah, okay, I'll look into that. I'll get right back to you. Anybody else experiencing this? Anyway, like I said, that's their response to me. Now, I gave her a response. And before I give you that response, I'm going to read something from you, there for you. Where I believe this is evidence that proves that the Honorable Jody Wilson-Raybould is full of shit. As is the Honorable Justin Trudeau. As a matter of fact, I would claim that if that is the answer of, and Ms. Raybould, you need to contact me and, and confirm that that is your official answer. I want to sign in your hand that that's your official answer. Because then I will proceed to find somebody. Because again, this is all dependent on me finding anybody to write this down for me. And so far in 12 years, that's not been able to be done. So I guess they got nothing to worry about, eh? All you Christians out there and God-fearing people who are about truth and honesty and democracy and fight for the, the respect the people who die for democracy and got wounded for democracy. You know, I'm not talking about anybody in government because it's obvious there's nobody there that meets any of those bills, including, uh, you know, I did, actually, I'm not getting the whole help I'm supposed to, even from the disability minister. You know, where's my representation? Anyway, let's go back to this. So I would say that given the answer that I got from, from my query that I just read, compared to the letter I'm about to read you, Ms. Raybould, one of them is false. Personally, from my experience and from the way things are run, it's the letter I'm about to read that was falsely filed in Parliament by Honorable Justin Trudeau and Honorable Jody Wilson-Raybould. 
Here, let me just check and make sure it was signed. Who's it signed by? Let's see. Go down to the end of this. No, it's only signed by Right Honorable Justin Trudeau, PC, MP, Prime Minister of Canada. But this is a directive to Ms. Raybu. So, again, here we go. Here's the bullshit section. In my opinion, my experience. And I guess experience, I'm an expert because it's 12 years, that's over 10. So I guess I'm an expert on how they dismiss you and your rights, especially as a disabled person in Canada. But, the, you know, the harsh reality is it's not just disabled in Canada that, are, that this is happening to. This is the Canadian just us system. We are nothing like the Americans. Our elected officials do not work for us. They work for the crown, which is Queen Elizabeth. So when you come there with wrongdoing, especially when it's definitive proof, well, I don't mean to say more. I mean, their actions speak more than, than anything because here we are a year later and I have nothing, not a syllable put in of my story. That's why I had to come on YouTube and do, do it this way. So anyway, let's get back to the point. Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. This letter again is available at pm.gc.ca backslash eng backslash minister hyphen justice hyphen and hyphen attorney hyphen general, hyphen Canada, hyphen mandate, hyphen letter. Minister of Justice and Attorney General candidate mandate letter. Canada mandate letter, sorry. Office of the Prime Minister, Ottawa, Canada, K1A, OA2. And in French, Cabinet du Premier, Ministre. Minister, I guess. Ministre? I don't know. I, I haven't been in French since grade 8. Anyway, um, I was very high in it, though. I'd like to relearn it. <clears throat> Dear Ms. wilson Raybould, I am honored that you have agreed to serve Canadians as Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. We have promised Canadians a government that will bring real change in both what we do and how we do it. Canadians sent a clear message in this election and our platform offered a new ambitious plan for a strong and growing middle class. Canadians expect us to fulfill our commitments and it is my expectation that you will do your part in delivering on those promises to Canadians. We made a commitment to invest in growing our economy, strengthening the middle class, and helping those working hard to join it. We committed to provide more direct help to those who need it by giving less to those who do not. We committed to public investment as, a way, as the best way to spur economic growth, job creation, and broad-based prosperity. We committed to a responsible, transparent fiscal plan for challenging economic times. I expect Canadians to hold us accountable for delivering these commitments and I expect all ministers to do their part individually and collectively to improve economic opportunity and security for Canadians. It is my expectation that we will deliver real results in professional government to Canadians. I ensure that we have a, or sorry, to ensure that we have a strong focus on results, I will expect cabinet committees and individual minist individual ministers to track and report on progress of our commitments, assess the effectiveness of our work, and align our resources with priorities in order to get the results we want and Canadians deserve. If we are to tackle the real changes we face as a country from a struggling middle class to the threat of climate change, Canadians need to have faith in their government's honesty and willingness to listen. I expect that our work will be informed by performance measurement, evidence, and feedback from Canadians. I guess that's what this is, is feedback, eh? Uh, we will direct our resources to those initiatives that are having the greatest positive impact on the lives of Canadians and that will allow us to meet our commitments to them, such as the disabled, UN uh, protocol on disability rights and optional protocol. How about accessibility to the courts? Real accessibility to the courts. But those aren't priorities, obviously. I, guess, eh? I mean, I raise those issues and she said, well, you read what she said, right? <sighs> Okay, I'm not sure where I left off. So. I expect our work will be informed by performance measurement, evidence, and feedback from Canadians. We will direct our resources to those initiatives that are having the greatest positive impact on the lives of Canadians and that will allow us to meet our commitments to them. 
I expect you to report regularly on your progress toward fulfilling our commitments and to help develop effective measures that assess the impact of the organizations to which you are answerable, such as the Attorney General of Ontario. But please, if you're not responsible for their office, then who is in the federal level? Or, yeah, I forgot, you got to go find a leader somewhere. Because the only place you're leading us is by the nose. Nice carrot, though. I made a personal commitment to bring new leadership and a new tone to Ottawa. Yeah, it's like, la 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 la. How's that tone, Justin? We made a commitment to Canadians to pursue our goals with a renewed sense of collaboration. Improved partnerships with provincial, territorial, municipal governments are essential to deliver the real positive change that we promise Canadians. No relationship is more important to me and to Canada than the one with Indigenous peoples. It is time for a renewed nation-to-nation -nation relationship with Indigenous peoples based on recognition of rights, respect, cooperation, and partnership. Gee, those words were in every treaty that came before that, too, so I guess they got a lot of weight now, hey? Because it's Justin's hand. Ooh, yeah. On behalf of the Queen. Same Queen, right? Same Queen is a different Queen. Yeah. Same family, dynasty. You know, used to give poison blankets to children. Still able to run around the world with no passport. You know, biggest terrorist in history. Next to the crap, or Pope. We've also committed to set a higher bar for openness and transparency in government. It is time to shine more light on government to ensure it remains focused on the people it serves. Well, you mean the crown? Government and its information should be open by default. If we want Canadians to trust their government, we need government to trust Canadians. It is important that we acknowledge mistakes when we make them. This isn't a mistake, is it, Jody? No, not at all. It's deliberate, right? It's not a mistake. You're doing it deliberately, right? But you can't make any comment because you have to hide for the government of Canada that you're covering for right now. Isn't that a conflict of interest? Are you allowed to hold the, the position of Minister of Justice and Attorney General at the same time when you're diametrically opposed to each other? That is the quintessential definition of conflict of interest, isn't it? Because you're supposed to protect the Crown first and foremost, which is what this demonstrates. Freedom in Canada. We're all free, aren't we? Yeah. It's a Canadian dream. Only problem is... Time to wake up. It's not a dream. It is important that we acknowledge mistakes when we make them. Canadians do not expect us to be perfect. They expect us to be honest open and sincere in our efforts to serve the public interest. Our platform guides our government. Over the course of our four-year mandate, I expect us to deliver on all our commitments. It is our collective responsibility to ensure that we fulfill our promises while living within our fiscal plan. Other issues will arise or will be brought to our attention by Canadians, stakeholders, and the public service. It is my expectation that you will engage constructively and thoughtfully and add priorities to your agenda when appropriate. So I guess priorities of disability abuse, be, uh, having a proper statement taken, you know, basic things like that, that's not a priority in this, eh? in the, or, or serves the public interest. To find out which, which uh, government officials aren't doing their job under duty of law. That wouldn't help any of those, like this criminally operating labor system and, and healthcare system and workplace slavery and interference system that's protected by the police and the Crown and everybody in Ontario, you know, uh, lost time injuries wouldn't be reduced if you actually upheld the law eh? uh, and stopped all this nonsense. Uh, you know, all the cost of policing and, and healthcare and everything else wouldn't go down, right? Well, please present your proof because I'm here to tell you it will. And we demand answers. It's called, that is what you're there for. Oh, well, we have real issues with real evidence, and we ask for answers. You go, well, I don't have to answer. You need to read your job description a little bit closer. And, and the idea of public trust. It definitely shows who you're there to protect. And it's not us, especially disabled. But let the actions speak louder than the words, shall we? Back to the words, though. 
There we go. You can maybe use it to go to sleep, make you feel comfortable. As minister, you'll be held accountable for our commitment to bring a different style of leadership to government. Funny, this style doesn't seem any different from the last government. Can I deflect and obstruct? Victimize and criminalize? That's exactly what's been going on in Canada for the last 12 years. So the last two were Justin, right? This will include close collaboration with your colleagues. Well, there's lots of that going on. Meaningful engagement with opposition members of parliament, parliamentary committees, and public service. Constructive dialogue with Canadians, civil society, and stakeholders, including businesses, organized labor, the broader public sector, and the not-for-profit and charitable sectors. And identify ways to find solutions and avoid escalating conflicts unnecessarily. As well, members of the parliamentary press gallery, indeed all journalists in Canada and abroad are professionals who, by asking necessary questions, contribute in an important way to the democratic process. Your professionalism and engagement with them is essential. Canadians expect us in our work to reflect the values we all embrace, inclusion, honesty, hard work, fiscal prudence, and generosity of spirit. We will be a government that governs for all Canadians, and I expect you and your work to bring Canadians together. You are expected to do your part to fulfill our government's commitment to transparent, merit-based appointments, to help ensure gender parity, and that Indigenous Canadians and minority groups are better reflected in positions of leadership. You have a double role as both Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. As Minister of Justice, you are the legal advisor to Cabinet. In this capacity, you are responsible with the administration of justice, including policy in such areas as criminal law, family law, human rights law, public law and private international law, constitutional law, and Aboriginal justice. So let me read that again, Ms. Ray Boole, and for everybody else. As Minister of Justice, you are the legal advisor to Cabinet, so you should be telling them, hey, this is bad. We need to stop this, because if we don't, we're liable. But they decided, but we have way more resources than Mr. Bacon. So again, in your letter of answer to me, it says, right in your letter, in this capacity as Minister of Justice, you are responsible with the administration of justice. I don't see anything about provincial ministry there. Oh, you're just passing the buck. You're not responsible for how the uh, Attorney General of Ontario performs their duties. I think you're mistaken. Either that or this is a lie. One of the two, but you need to come forward and explain yourself. Mr. Trudeau and Ms. Ray Bould and, and Disability Minister and Safety Minister and every other minister I ever freaking wrote. So you are responsible with the administration of justice, including policy in such areas as criminal law. So is it, again, policy of criminal law. How it affects the UN protocol on disability affects the rights of the, of the accused. That is your responsibility. Justin, you might have to have a talk with her because I think she's a little gray area. You know, there's 50 shades of gray when it's all black and white, especially when it comes to talk versus action. 12 years of action, my friend. Not my friend. Enemy. Mine enemy. Administration of justice, including policy in areas such as criminal law, family law, human rights law, public, oh, human rights law, there you go. Public law and private international law, constitutional law, yeah, and Aboriginal justice. As the Attorney General of Canada, you are the Chief Law Officer of the Crown, responsible for conducting all litigation for the federal government and for upholding the Constitution, the rule of law and respect of the independence of the courts. But that means upholding the Constitution in the provincial courts. Upholding the rule of law. Well, that's being upheld, which is the queen is the law. And we rule everybody through submiss subjugation, oppression, deny, deflect, obstruct, and propaganda. As Minister of Attorney and sorry, as Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada, your overarching goal will be to ensure our legislation meets the highest standards of equity, fairness, and respect for the rule of law. 
I expect you to ensure that our initiatives respect the Constitution of Canada. Court decisions are in keeping with our proudest legal traditions, such as silencing the disabled and those who can't speak for themselves. You are expected to ensure the rights of Canadians are protected. That our work demonstrates the greatest possible commitment to respecting the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and that our government seeks to fulfill our policy goals with the least interference with the rights and privacy of Canadians as possible. I guess I don't rate. I'm special. But this is my personal situation. Right? Even though you represent all Canadians. Well, you're supposed to. No, you represent the crown. You all represent the crown. And population of Canada, you need to get that. They are not here for us. The only purpose of us being here is we are sheep, cattle, meant to be subject to whatever their whim is at any time. Then there, the next part is, in particular, I will expect you to work with your colleagues and through established legislative, regulatory, and cabinet process to deliver on your, on your top priorities, Ms. Raybould. Here they are in a list from Mr. Trudeau. Lead a process supported by the Minister of Health to work with provinces and territories to respond to the Supreme Court of Canada's decision regarding physician-assisted death. Of course, patient harm and medical error shouldn't be discussed first before you assist people with dying from all the harm and error, right? Such as me, I'd be almost willing to sign on that document just to be able to get out of this fucking popsicle stand and this merry-go-round of your bullshit fucking rights. Horse shit. Go sell it somewhere else. Genie's out of the bottle. Emperor has no clothes and you're all fucking naked. Can't put the genie back in the bottle. I see you exactly for what you are, and I will never see you as anything else. You are my oppressor. You are my torturer. You are responsible for the removal of my human rights because you're the fucking criminal. You could try and sell it any fucking way you want. Canada can suck shit. You're a fucking hypocrite. The citizenship isn't worth the paper it's written on. And the more you fucking people allow this to keep continuing, you are enablers and you are responsible. You can't escape responsibility anymore. You want to be, you know, you're all phony. You're all frauds. But then image is everything, isn't it? Media is the message, isn't it? Yeah, you have the right to remain silent, idiots. Oh, Canada. Develop in collaboration with Minister of Indigenous and Northern Affairs and supported by the Minister of Status of Women an approach to and a mandate for an inquiry into murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls in Canada, including the identification of a lead minister. Review our litigation strategy. This should include early decisions to end appeals or positions that are not consistent with our commitments, the charter, or our values. You should conduct a review of the changes in our criminal justice system and sentencing reforms over the past decade with a mandate to assess the changes, ensure that we are increasing the safety of our communities, getting value for money, addressing gaps, and ensuring that current provisions are aligned with the objectives of the criminal justice system. So I guess the mental health court is my private situation your creation your rules your judges your lawyers your everybody but it's not your job it's my personal situation Oh, Canada.
Outcomes of this process should include increased use of restorative justice processes and other initiatives to reduce the rate of incarceration amongst Indigenous Canadians and implementation of recommendations from the inquest into the death of Ashley Smith regarding the restriction of the use of solitary confinement and the treatment of those with mental illness. So again, this is my personal situation. We are talking directly about what happened to Ashley Smith. Police corruption, government corruption, cover-up of fucking wrongdoing of those who are supposed to be upholding the law. Oh, it's my personal situation. Miss, you're so honorable. All of you. Treatment of those with mental illness. Yeah, let's just blame everything on them. Let's shoot them and let's let's not use tasers on them. Let's let's murder them in the streets and let's start a campaign with our collaborative partners of Bell Media and everywhere else to go. Oh, but insanity needs to be shot because they're just insane what they're saying. Yeah, the only insanity going on here is that I expect you ever to fucking do the right thing, you motherfuckers. Not any one of you. Not family. Not friends. Not any of you. They're just fucking words. Work with the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness and the Minister of Indigenous and Northern Affairs to address gaps in services to Aboriginal people and those with mental illness throughout the criminal justice system. It's not your job. It's my personal situation. Working with ministers of public safety and emergency preparedness and health create a federal provincial territorial process that will lead to the legalization and regulation of marijuana. Can't even get that right. Undertake modernization efforts to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the criminal justice system in cooperation with provinces and territories. This should include improved use of information technology to make the system more efficient and timely, exploration of sentencing alternatives and bail reform, the creation of a unified family court. Not your job. Not in the description. Don't worry, you can pick and choose which ones you want to do, right, Justin? Hey, Mr. Leader, how about stepping up and answering to the accountability of your ministers? Is this an acceptable answer? Not my job. Doesn't even work in the workplace. Not in my job description. I happen to be reading your job description right here from your freaking leader. Or leader. There's only one thing you people are good at leading people down. That's down the garden path of bullshit. Just plug your nose. You won't notice. You fucking assholes. Support the Minister of Canadian Heritage to restore a modern court challenges program. Yeah, we all need to make money, eh? $900 million in the court system because it's all about arguing whether or not you have the protection of the law, right? You don't actually have the protection of it, ever. When? I haven't been protected in the law, by the law in over 12 years. And especially the last year in our criminal justice system clearly demonstrated that, guess what? Optional protocol. This is crimes against humanity and against the War Crimes Act of Canada, let alone international. So, hey, UN, you don't accept video, video uh, evidence, do you? Well, hey, I'm putting this out in the world and you can fuck yourself too, you fucking liars. I am ashamed to call myself Canadian, let alone fucking human. You people are fucking human. You're fucking animals. Selfish fucking animals. Work with the ministers of finance and national revenue to develop a modernized regulatory and legal framework governing the charitable and not-for-profit sectors. Yeah, you got to make them so that, are you aware that Amnesty, people will ask me, why haven't I gone to Amnesty International or uh, Human Rights Watch? Well, I have, but there's something you don't know. They're only allowed to operate in Canada as long as they don't quote on anything in Canada 
or anything Canada does abroad. Same with every other country they're in. This is what they mean by uh, develop a modernized regulatory and legal framework governing the charitable and not-for-profit sectors. So that, you know, those agencies that used to steal, have the money for food, but they never give the food out to the people. You can't cover them anymore because they all either play by the same rules, which is don't tell. Shut up and keep the money flowing. You know, displacement of people is big business. It's the biggest business, always has been. You have no excuse anymore. I challenge every last one of you. You know, you don't have the wherewithal to stand up and do the right thing because, like I said, this is a year. Uh, 12 years I've been trying to get this done. Going out yelling my head on the fucking street corner. You know what? That's why the end of this tape is going to be exactly what it needs to be. There's only one fucking answer. Engage all parties in the House of Commons to ensure that the process of appointing Supreme Court justices is transparent, inclusive, and accountable to all Canadians. Or to Canadians, sorry, but there's no all in there. Accountable to Canadians. Consultation should be undertaken with all relevant stakeholders, and those appointed to the Supreme Court should be functionally bilingual. Support the ministers of public safety and emergency preparedness in his efforts to repeal key elements of Bill C-51 and introduce new legislation that strengthens accountability with respect to national security and better balances collective security with the rights and freedoms. Sorry, with rights and freedoms. There's no dot in there. Support the Pub Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness in his efforts to repeal key elements of Bill C-42 and implement our commitment to reduce the number of handguns and assault weapons on our streets. Implement our platform commitments to toughen criminal laws and bail conditions in cases of domestic assault in consultation with stakeholders and with the goal of keeping survivors and children safe. You should undertake this work in consultation with the Minister of Status of Women and the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness. Work with the President of the Treasury Board to enhance the openness of government, government including support his review of the Access to Information Act to ensure Canadians have easier access to their own personal information. That the information commissioner is empowered to order governmental information to be re sorry, to order government information to be released, and that the act applies appropriately to the prime ministers and ministers' offices, as well as administrative institutions that support parliament and the courts. Introduce government legislation to add gender identity as a prohibited ground for discrimination under the Canadian Human Rights Act, and list the distinguishing characters of identifiable group protected by the hate speech provisions of the Crim criminal code. I need to take a break, I'm sorry. Okay, I gotta try and keep it awake. I'm sorry. I, this has been psychologically damaging. And I'm. Anyway. Don't even know why I'm doing this. It's a waste of fucking time. These priority. These priorities draw heavily from our election platform commitments. The government's agenda will be further articulated through cabinet discussions and in the speech from the throne when Parliament opens. Maybe I should publish that one too because uh, he will have other empty promises they don't ever intend on keeping. But they exploit every last one. They get paid no matter which side of this happens. And the longer they keep it in limbo as far as getting any real answers or any real leadership to get real uh, movement towards something progressive and, and positive rather than this regressive bullshit fucking government that's been going on for since I can remember especially now that my eyes have been open to the reality of how they actually operate on every fucking level this ain't the, yeah it's just everybody's got it all wrong you're wrong the system is broken but working exactly the way it's designed to and you are all complicit but hey, as long as you're okay, as long as, you, as long as you believe that you're safe when you go into a hospital, until you're not. Don't worry, go back to sleep. There's nothing for you here. There's no issue here for you at all. Don't worry about it. I'm used to it, 12 years. Bullshit artists, nothing but bullshit artists. Might as well be reading 
the Snow White. These words have just as much meaning. I expect you to work closely with your deputy minister and his or her senior officials to ensure that the ongoing work of your department is undertaken in a professional manner that decisions are made in the public interest. So it's not the public interest that persons with disabilities and other persons who can't write it down for themselves are held captive by the justice system, legal aid, and that because it's about their wrongdoing that we don't get it written down. That's not public interest, right? Obviously it's not because I've been trying to raise it for 12 years and nobody's interested. So you're absolutely right. I think you're safe on that one. It's not public interest. You know, nobody's interested. They just want, why are you talking? Just sit down, shut up, and go away. Just like the Jews and homosexuals in World War II. And, and gee, you're working so hard on that law to make sure that we can get a needle and get put down. Eh? Yeah, your agenda is not, not transparent at all. Not yet, but I, I intend to show people exactly how transparent you are. All of you. Because I reached out to every party. None of them want to discuss this. None of them believe that any of these issues about public safety, patient harm, legal uh, obstruction on every level, to cover up government wrongdoing and criminality in government, you know, those are not of public interest. They're just not priorities for the justice minister or anybody else for that matter. Even to the point where I am coming to the decision that I made at the end of this case, regretfully. I guess you'll have to just wait till the end, find out what I'm talking about. Am I going to blow my brains out? Who knows? That's been done on television before, right? Never know. I might pull out a gun. And go, ah, my brain's all over the place. Gee, wouldn't that? I, I've been so entertaining for the last 12 years, haven't I? Guess you'll have to stay tuned and find out, eh? Mm. I mean, after all, I am crazy. So I'll start that paragraph over again. I expect you to work closely with your deputy minister and his or her senior officials to ensure that the ongoing work of your department is undertaken in a professional manner that decisions are made in the public interest. Your deputy minister will brief you on your on issues your department may be facing that may require decisions to be made quickly. It is my expectation that you will apply our values and principles to these decisions so that issues facing your department that are dealt with in a timely and responsible manner and that in that way and in a way that is consistent with the overall direction of our government. So I guess this is the demonstration of all that, is it? So we can be clear that this is the direction of your government. I think I got, I mean, after 12 years of Canadian government of Canada, of which Justin Trudeau was a part of, even if he was the opposition, government of Canada is all parties. I know they like to try and focus you on, no, it's just the conservatives. Because that lets the other guys off the hook, right? Oh, you're so gullible. You will take everything and go and do a Daenerys Stormborn on any of the 1% around the world. You can kill your masters. Oh, sorry, I was just reenacting a scene from uh, uh, Game of Thrones. You know, Daenerys Stormborn, the Stormbringer. Breaker of Chains. Any fans out there? Anybody got any ideas we might be able to enact to fix this problem? In a roundabout, entertaining kind of way. I wish you would. Solve a lot of problems. Yeah. yeah. A couple of heads on a spit around the world. Yeah, it's only 13 families. 13 families. And it's all over. Nah, that's wishful thinking. It's also a, 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 it's only a hypothetical scenario. I'm not trying to communicate with anybody out there. Don't worry. We're just discussing Game of Thrones and possible solutions that were presented on television. No, the only way to do this is one person, one vote, majority rules. Because you know what the irony of that would be? Sticking it right up their ass with their fucking bullshit about democracy and turning them on their fucking heads because guess what? It either makes them go, 
yeah, we rule now, or they show their hand. Either way, you know what? You want to live in a fucking dream? Go to sleep. Stay asleep. Already are. So, Minister Ray Bould, is this not one of those situations that I just described? Uh, so, I expect you to work closely with your deputy minister, which is who I was speaking with, right? Oh, no, I guess I didn't, right? Your deputy, because it's only secretaries. Because if your secretary doesn't give you a deputy minister, well, he just didn't hear about it, so therefore you didn't hear for it. So, therefore, there's just no issue. Anyway, I expect you to work more closely with deputy minister and his or her senior officials to ensure that the ongoing work of your department is undertaken in a professional manner and decisions are made in the public interest. Your deputy minister will brief you on issues your department may be facing that may require decisions be made quickly. So March 26th till June 17th, that's quickly. Especially in this situation. Only to find out that you're sloughing off your responsibility as usual. Because that's true leadership, right? Honorable J Jody Wilson Rebu and Honorable Justin Trudeau and Honorable Public Safety Minister and Honorable uh, Disability Minister and Honorable Family and Disability or Families and Children's Minister or whatever, right? All you uh, Honorable Kathleen Wynn, Honorable Attorney General of Ontario, Honorable fucking Police fucking state, fuck you. So this doesn't not meet that quote, the, the, the description of that, eh? It's not in the public interest. And this is the over, this is to confirm the overall direction of your government, which is same old, same old. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Because you all work for not the people of Canada, but that agenda is moving forward. Our ability as a government to successfully implement our platform depends on our ability to thoughtfully consider the professional, nonpartisan advice of public servants. Each and every time a government employee comes to work, they do so in service to Canada with the goal of improving our country and the lives of all Canadians. I'm not all Canadians. I'm special. I expect you to establish a collaborative working relationship with your deputy minister whose role and the role of public service under hers or her direction is to support you in the performance of your responsibilities. In the coming weeks, the Privy Council Office, PCO, will be contacting you to set up a meeting with PCO officials, your deputy minister, and the prime minister's office to further discuss your plans, commitments, and priorities. We have committed to an open, honest government that is accountable to Canadians, lives up to the highest ethical standards, and applies the utmost care and prudence in the handling of public funds. I expect you to embody these values in your work and observe the highest ethical standards in everything you do. When dealing with our cabinet colleagues, parliament, stakeholders, or the public, it is important that your behavior and decisions meet Canadians' well-founded expectations of our government. I want Canadians to look on their own government with pride and trust. Tell me, do I look like I have proud, I'm proud of my government and I have trust in my government? You think I'm ever going to believe a goddamn word you ever fucking say again? Go sell it somewhere else. My eyes have been opened and I see the real enemy, the one who's made me an enemy for 12 fucking years because I speak the truth. Yeah, well, you know what? You're a coward. You're a fraud. You have no integrity. And without integrity, you have no real authority. It's all a dream. It's the Canadian dream that you built. Because it's the dream that you rule. You don't. And you don't rule me. I am not your subject, and I am not subject to your bullshit because it is illegitimate. It is not the law. And you can go take your lawn, fuck yourself with it. One thing I've learned from this is I will never 
call on the law for anything ever again. There is no protection there for me. So I have the, uh, I have the job of protecting myself. That is clear. Because there's nobody here protecting me except for my caregiver, Denise. The only person who ever meant anything she said. The only thing, the only person who's ever, and, and she's been as much of a victim, if not more of a victim in this than anybody. And the whole purpose of this deny, deflect, and obstruct policy is to get all those people that care about you to fucking abandon you. To isolate you. Oh, I'm included, all right. Inclusive society? Fuck you. I don't want part. You know what? I'm glad I'm not part of your society. I'm glad I'm not one of you. Because you're fucking despicable. All just words. But hey, let's finish the fairy tale, shall we? We have committed to an open on. We have committed to an open, honest government that is accountable to Canadians, lives up to the highest ethical standards, and applies to the utmost care and prudence in the handling of public funds. I expect you to embody these values in your work and above observe, sorry, observe the highest ethical standards in everything you do. When dealing with our cabinet colleagues, parliament stakeholders, or the public, it is important that your behavior and decisions meet Canada's well-founded expectations of our government. I want Canadians to look on their own government with pride and trust. As Minister, you must ensure that you are aware of and fully compliant with the Conflict of Interest Act and Treasury Board policies and guidelines. You will be provided with a copy of Open and Accountable Government to assist you as you undertake your responsibilities. I ask that you carefully read and ensure that your staff does so as well. I draw your attention in particular to ethical guidelines set out in Annex A of that document which apply to you and your staff. As noted in the guidelines, you must uphold the highest standards of honesty and impartiality and both the performance of your official duties and the arrangement of your private affairs should bear the closest public scrutiny. This is an obligation that is not fully discharged by simply acting within the law. Please also review the areas of open and accountable government that we have expanded or strengthened including the guidance on nonpartisan issue of departmental communications resource and the new code of conduct for exempt staff. I know I can count on you to fulfill the important responsibilities entrusted in you. In turn, please know that you can count on me to support you every day in your role as minister. I am deeply grateful to have this opportunity to serve with you as we build an even greater country. Together, we will work tirelessly to honor the trust the Canadians have given us. Yours sincerely. Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, P, period C, period hyphen MP, Prime Minister of Canada. So that's what they promised Canadians. Instead, I got the answer that I got, which again, I will recap. After almost three months of waiting. Dear Mr. Bacon, on behalf, and so again, on Friday, June 17, 2016, 226, dear Mr. Bacon, on behalf of the Honorable Jody wilson Raybould of Justice, or Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada, I acknowledge receipt of your correspondence concerning your personal, personal situation. I regret, regret the delay in responding. As Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada, Mr. Minister Wilson Raybould is mandated to provide legal advice only to the federal government. I hope that you will understand that for this reason, she is not able to provide legal advice to members of the public or become involved in the, situ in the situation you describe. Similarly, neither department officials nor members of her staff are in a position to help resolve the issues you raise. No representation whatsoever perfectly fine what what you do on every level it may be helpful for you to know that the administration of justice is the responsibility of the provincial governments therefore if you have not already done so you may wish to write the appropriate provincial authorities please note that the minister Wilson Raybould has no authority over provincial matters thank you for writing yours sincerely 
a high, uh, backslash manager ministerial correspondence unit. So does that response sound anything like that promise or mandate letter at all? Which is why here's my response, and here's my response to Canada. Country I love. So I had to take a little break. Here's my response. I forwarded a response reply. And this is my reply. Because after 12 years of nothing but abuse and neglect and obstruction, and that extends to so called family. Yeah, you need to look up the word. One thing I'm clear about in the last 12 years is I have no family. None whatsoever. Whole family of Christians. So called self professed Christians and Catholics and a few, few uh, atheists. But you know what? They don't believe in anything. They certainly don't believe in loyalty. And I can honestly say that I would not be here today without 100% support and love and caring of my family. But then that says exactly what it is about, you know, where we are placed in this society. How we're dismissed. We're just complaining too damn much. We just got too much to say. And we don't do anything. We got a free ride. We don't have to work. Man, I, you know, I, I wish that every last motherfucking one of you would be disabled for one fucking day. One day. Bullshit artist cowards. All about image. As long as you look good, right? Yeah, I've seen it. I know the word betrayal. Anyway, here's my response to everybody. Okay? After 12 years plus of abuse and no help whatsoever from anybody. There's only one thing I have faith in now. And that's all that's left is God. God and me. And Denise. Denise is the only one, the only one who ever followed through on what she promised or said. She's been here by my side, suffering along with me because, and, and I still say more. Because it's got, I mean, I, I, I get to see her response to this. She's trying to help me. You know, and I have a caregiver. I mean, she's a caregiver. I take care of myself. She helps with the slack. She helps me when I can't, when I get too tired and stuff. When I have difficulty, you know, she's been clearly identified since the beginning, too, in all aspects. Workplace safety and insurance, government, hospitals, health care, everything. And not one person throughout this whole thing has ever asked her her opinion or what do you take it as even though she's God forward to people going what gives and as president everyone they go oh well I'm having difficulty talking with you so now this is all over and I don't have to do what you're required to do I'm dismissed. You just don't understand my value. Or any of our values. And you don't care to. Because you're not interested. That's clear. And you can give all the lip service about human rights and how much you... You know, Canada is the biggest bullshit artist when it comes to human rights. If anybody did any real searching on human rights in Canada, you would find out that women were treated as furniture up until, what, 1972? That once you got married, 
if, if, if your husband wanted to break the leg of the chair, he could do that. And there's nothing the chair could do about it. Same with children. We are really good at standing up in the world stage and pointing our finger at other people about what's abuse. And we should know because Canadians have been practicing more medical abuse than anybody else, even Hitler probably, and it's still going on today, especially with regard to non-medical professionals directing treatment. That medically trained doctors are allowing these medical tra un unmedically trained professionals to direct whether or not a patient gets treatment. And these are very serious issues for every Canadian in this. You know what? I'm done talking. Here's my response. It's fuck you. Okay? Here we go. You want to hear it? Got the guts? I'm not at the end yet. You never know. I might still blow my fucking brains out, eh? Need to be entertaining. Without prejudice to whom it may concern, Oh, this was sent at 11.50 a.m. two hours ago. At least it looks like it two hours ago. I don't know why I should check. Yeah, no, it's actually more than two hours ago. It's 2.19 now, so it was sent, sent at 10 to 12. Anyway, um, without prejudice, to whom it may concern, it's a good thing you are so honorable, isn't it? You are the situation I describe. Where is my representation? I have written, emailed, phoned, videotaped, still no representative on any level. Only this dismissive but permissive rhetoric of pass the buck and blame everyone else. You are required to, like, and again, from that letter, the way I understood it, and please tell me maybe I'm wrong. Leave your comments on this video. You are required to uphold the law and the Constitution. You are responsible for the administration of justice in Canada and are the boss of every Attorney General in Canada. And right now, for the past 12 plus years, the Attorney General of Ontario and the Government of Ontario is acting illegally against every mandate they profess to uphold. Their duty under law. I, I didn't put duty law under law in there. You are aiding and abetting and facilitating these crimes against humanity in the name of the crown, the crown, who is the only terrorist I have ever met or been forced to deal with. Hypocrites and liars all. How dare you? So I guess these words in this official document registered by your government and sold as the new transparency and the new governance of Canada is bullshit. Deliberately falsely filed. Perjury. Filing false documents in Parliament. Obstruction. And right below that I gave her a link to, her, to the letter I just wrote, which is http backslash backslash pm.gc.ca backslash eng backslash minister hyphen justice hyphen and hyphen attorney hyphen general hyphen Canada hyphen mandate hyphen letter. I'm sure the Canadian public would like to compare this response against your promises, sorry, promises, especially in this case. Keep your eye on YouTube. My channel is cjbacon at youtube.com or whatever. Most of my videos are actual laws and regulations you profess is in your policies and procedures. Now I put down PNP, &P, which stands for policies and procedures, of your transparent and new government and style of governance are run by. For example, providing legal services in Canada is part one and part two, and I, they're there. I read the actual document that they are all supposed to be following, okay? So as a public service, I have done an oral reading 
of these documents, and believe me, most of, actually 99% of the documents are strictly the documents. I don't even make comment, okay? And, and it's very minimal when I do, but it's poignant to my case to point out which part. Anyway, it's there. Oral reading of, every, of these acts. So, providing legal services in Canada, part one and part two. The UN Guidebook for Parliamentarians, part one through five, with part five being the actual UN protocol and optional protocol for parliamentarians, which says that is the international law that they are in violation of, let alone domestic and other international laws. It's true, the report from 2012 or whenever it was, right after the Aboriginal report, that it is only window dressing in Canada. Are you getting that, UN Rapporteur? Is it not prudent? Again, UN, you have to write it down or have somebody write it down. A videotape like this is not permitted. But that's human rights, right? That's in compliance with the law. That respects my dignity and <coughs> right to privacy. <coughs> my ability to seek private enjoyment. Have anything in my life. I haven't been able to control my life in over 12 years because I walked into an employer that was allowed to operate illegally without the pro the legal situation being it was identified you go to occupational health and safety code it says right in there under 20 employees before you open the door before you hire a single person you are required to have a safety worker representative not to have one is illegal and in bad faith and the government especially labor board and attorney general when it is now criminal code even under terms of in good faith they fail but the fact that you couple that with westray bill and why was westray bill brought in for the very same reason because they were going through the same things there many reports of workplace safety violations Many of them doing their own policing where they said everything was fine until the mind blew up and took all those people with them. Same tactics by the government to try and cover up. Both provincially, locally, and federally. All working together to keep the lid on things because that's the rule of government. They are to protect the crown including any lawyer representing them, which is why they shaped the terms of that inquiry. But even in spite of that, because the rules were there and it was necessary for that law to be made in the Constitution, in the Criminal Code of Canada, for the very same reasons they allowed this employer to operate. If that's not criminal complicity, what the fuck is? Publications I read there, I'm sorry, I apologize. This is, I, you can't live like this. I'm not sorry. And this is unbelievable. It's just more and more levels of unbelievable psychological fucking warfare. Actively engaged on every fucking level. Fuck you you're a bully it's a bully pulpit all i'm asking for hey man fair fight any one of you motherfuckers get off your fucking high horse come down at the street at 12 noon you and i fucking face to face toe to toe fucking fist to fist and let's fucking go at least that'd be a fair fucking fight Oh, 
Oh, Canada. Providing Legal Services in Canada, Part 1 and 2. The UN Guidebook for Parliamentarians, Part 1 through 5, with Part 5 being the actual UN protocol and optional protocol. You might want to finally read it and implement it sometime when you get around to it. And information of the Westray Bill Editions, the Criminal Code of Canada, Ontario Public Service Handbook, etc. I put it there as a resource for any citizen, politician, judge, lawyer, law school, legal aid lawyers, etc. to utilize because you are also busy. And obviously haven't had time to peruse the information. Because not one of you are implementing a single iota of it. At least not in real time. Oh, there's lots of words printed though. It looks good on paper. I thought I'd contribute to the solution. Feel free to utilize these oral readings of the appropriate legislation. And most of all, tell all of your colleagues to... Obstruct it, system-wide and across all systems. No other means of domestic recourse. Targeting a specific group or groups, for example, disabled, worker. How about law-abiding citizen as a group that you've targeted to have this effect? And let's not forget the rule of law and constitution and human rights and disability rights. Oh, I could go on, but we'd be here all day. It's already up to one hour 17, mostly because I'm psychologically not able to handle this right now. I'm on the verge of fucking losing it. I'm left with no choice. Not one syllable entered in as evidence on my behalf. No assistance of any kind to hold anyone accountable due to deliberate obstruction and an active ongoing campaign of misinformation and government subversive, subversion against the accuser. Victimized and criminalized. Yup. Crimes Against Humanity and Genocide is described in our very own Crimes Against Humanity and War Crimes Act, but no movement from government except the usual deny, deflect, obstruct, victimize, and criminalize the complainant. Surely it's your job to protect us from terrorist attacks, especially domestic attacks on law-abiding citizens performed here in Canada, especially since the accused is the Crown of which you are, I guess the only place is to make it appear impartial would be to go to International Criminal Court. But of course, that's the crown too, isn't it? That's the queen. Yeah, easy to get things done when the fix is in, eh? It sucks to have both titles now, I'd bet, but I, like I said, this is your system. And what I'm talking about that is she's the justice minister and the attorney general. And under conflict of interest, that is automatically a conflict of interest. Because how is the attorney general, who's responsible for administration of justice in Canada, able to assist me in my fight for justice when her job as justice minister is to advise against it? And to put everything in place to make sure it doesn't happen, which is the only effective means of representation in Canada. And this mental health court is proof. It is set up directly and for the sole purpose of interfering with the UN protocol on disability rights, optional protocol, and every domestic and international human rights law in history. 
It's their Walkerton. Looks good on paper, though, doesn't it? Like I said, it sucks to have both titles now, I bet. But I'd, like I said, this is your system, and you're the one in conflict, Ms. Ray Bould and Mr. Trudeau. And, gee, this wasn't foreseen, was it? Just like making your disability minister a minister so it protects her from criminal prosecution, too, when she was actually just an assistant minister, right? Deputy minister? Which aren't protected, but you knew that... And, and with me bringing these issues up, you since the election, you knew... That's why you made her a minister. So, yeah, you're, you're acting on behalf of the crown to protect the crown because that is your job. Your job is to con us into thinking you work for us. You con us by making this horse and pony show called an election that's rigged. Just like the law is rigged in Canada, and people need to go and look at the role of the Queen in Canada. Go and see what constitutional power or what power she has over the Constitution, and we're a free constitutional society. Really, you've been sold a bill of goods. You are the cattle. They are the stakeholders. They eat steak. Steak comes from cattle. Their agenda moves forward regardless of which government gets elected because the system is broken but working exactly the way they designed it to. And you all just play along. Because, hey, it's entertaining, isn't it? Isn't it entertaining above all? You know, it's more important to talk about that pimple on Kardashian's ass. What's his name again? Kanye? Anyway, yeah, it's way more important than human rights or the fact that people who are disabled, patients who are not disabled are being harmed. And the new policy in Canada is, well, we're privatized, so now you need to go hire a lawyer that works for us too. And waste all your money and time and effort deciding which law protected you at what time. Because that's how the law protects you. You have to go and have a lawyer with you 24-7. I can't go in a hospital. Matter of fact, I'm never a stepping foot in a Canadian hospital ever again. No doctor or nurse will ever lay their fucking hands on me ever again. And it's not the doctor's and nurse's problem. It's not their fault. This system is set up as a lie. I am not safe. Twelve years of dealing with this so-called checks and balances, open system, whether it's conservative government, provincial government, liberal government, fucking pick your, take your fucking pick. You're confused. Because it's all our responsibility. There's no difference between this and Auschwitz. And, and as a person with a disability, how am I? Oh, so it's like coming out of Auschwitz. You say, okay, well, here, learn how to read English and write English. Fill out this form. Then you have to go and interview all the people that did this to you. Go face them and, and cross the threshold every time and, and go up against them and have them slap you in the face every day at least three times before you even get started just to remind you of the pain and suffering they inflicted on you. And in all that, you get to overcome your disability of what you have to deal with every day, physically, mentally, and otherwise, just to get through your day without any new surprises of the next pain crisis that's coming on because they don't take care of your health care. You know, you can't get a straight answer from anybody because it's, it's so jumbled up and nobody does anything to fix it that there's nothing resembling care. Any doctor who comes near me goes, I don't want to even touch this. And they run away. I don't trust any of you. I will never trust any of you ever again. Back to the letter. This is your system. 
and all I have to do is press play. Oh yeah, and find someone to write it down for me. Yes, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Guess you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Can't wait to see you get yourselves out of this one. Fuck you, you terrorist supporting fucking liars. And this is written in the letter. I am quoting directly from the letter right now. I've only met one terrorist in my life Queen Elizabeth and her minions yes that means you Minister Ray Gould and Justin fucking Trudeau can't put the genie back in the bottle now sincerely without reservation Christopher J. Bacon, independent citizen of the world. Now you might ask me why it says of the world now instead of Canadian. That's because I'm not a Canadian citizen. Your, your laws are to be inclusive. Well, the one thing I got out for 12 years is I'm not included. I'm not a part of the society. You know what? After the 12 years I've just experienced, I'm fucking proud to say I'm not. I am ashamed to even call myself Canadian. I am ashamed of all the hypocrites that tout the so-called Canadian values and not even my fucking family steps up when it's time. You'd rather blame the person who's complaining. You know, as long as you're comfortable in your fucking life. Do you call that a life? The only reason why you're happy and where you are right now, if you even call that happiness, is because you're living in a fucking dream. The only way that their system works, and as believable as if you're in a dream, you have to sit there and suspend disbelief. That's why there's cognitive dissonance. You don't give a shit. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to know the truth because if you hear the truth and you hear it for real, then you'd have to accept that, oh my God, maybe I had something to do with it continuing. Well, you know what? This isn't about you. Never has been about you. It's about how you treat people like me. And for 12 years, because this Ontario government made a deliberate decision to continue to in their criminal enterprise of racketeering, playing both sides of the law, both sides of the fence, reaping the benefit of the exploitation of all the harmed people, of all the spin-off business for tribunals and lawyers and, and courts and medical and secondary medical and transportation and, and, and paper and communications and everything, you know, that they all get paid for. These employers do not pay any penny, not one penny to OHIP or to anybody else for any of the costs that they incur. So everything they do, like the Queen, is tax-free and on our backs because they are the Queen in this fucking country. Go and educate yourselves, you moronic fucking Canadian does. You are the enablers. Here's my final part of the letter. And this is sincere from the bottom of my fucking heart. Canada can kiss my ass. 
I refuse to support terrorist supporting governments or citizens who support terrorist governments. Go sell it somewhere else. I personally will never buy it again, ever, liars. God save the queen because no one else will or should. If anything, a big nuclear bomb dropped on that fucker's house would be the best thing that ever happened to this world. Of course, give everybody else in London a chance to get the fuck out of town first. Can't wait to hear your response to this one, too. Hey, Lizzie, you have a lot of explaining to do. Oh, venerable anointed one anointed by God, that we are her subjects, that she has the privilege of those she anoints with her special powers, that has been their privilege to do this to us. Never to be accountable to the law, ever, because we all sit on our ass and bah, bah, but when it times comes to stand up, well, I'm calling you out, you lying sacks of shit. Come on, Canada. Where's all these caring people who give a shit? Where's all these agencies like Democracy Watch, Amnesty International? Where, you know, we, we spend a lot of money on these things. People donate money to these things to what? To have it controlled by government now. You're all hypocrites. BC Civil Liberties... Arch Disability Law Management, you know, you're all fucking liars. And you're frauds because you've got paid millions of dollars over the time to do your cases, to, to print your books, to spew your garbage. And yet, this is where we are in Canada. I can't get a fucking statement taken. Why do you think Dr. Hare, and this is part of the letter again, why do you think Dr. Hare's measurement of psychopathic personality traits will never be performed on the royal family, corporations, or government officials? Because you would all fail and the real truth would be out. Now, for those of you who don't know Dr. Hare's test, it's the test for psychopathic traits. It's the one to say whether or not you're a psychopath in waiting or actually a psychopath. And actually, most people in government are psychopathic personalities. You don't have to be a killer. Matter of fact, some of the most successful psychopaths in history never killed anybody. Actually, they just do it metaphorically. Tear them down, rip them apart, make them into somebody like me, a non-entity in my own goddamn country. Somebody who has been deliberately and systemically stripped of his fucking rights to anything, any kind of representation, no health care, no protection from harm of any fucking kind. Matter of fact, it's open goddamn fucking season. So go tell it somewhere else. Oh, Canada. Anyway, the end result is this. My name is Christopher Bacon. I am of sound mind and body. I know exactly what I'm saying and what I'm doing when, at this moment. It is now 2.48 p.m. on Thursday, June 23rd, 2016. And I hereby declare that I resign my Canadian citizenship I am not a part of this country. I accept that now. You've used the license of my citizenship in order to try and exact terror on me for 12 years, a campaign of terror and harm, medical experimentation, crimes against humanity, stripped of my representation in any, whether it be medical, legal, in every fucking aspect. 
I resign my citizenship. I am seeking political asylum from any country that is not Westminster based style of governance and that will protect me because I am being persecuted from I am in the province of Ontario my home government is the province of Ontario and I seek refugee status from persecution in Canada as a person with a disability against crimes against protection from crimes against humanity genocide and medical experimentation on my person no human rights at all matter of fact this country is bent on trying to harm me destroy me make me destroy myself they have engaged in an ongoing campaign of misinformation and psychological warfare on my fucking person and I'm that of my caregiver because they are incapable of acting of, with anything but impunity and criminality I am in danger I am not safe they are re while this is going on and I'm asking for representation the same government is ramming through legislation to have people like me put down. Even before they discuss anything about where is anything to do with ensuring that patients aren't being harmed, that patient safety is being adhered to, that there is any mechanism in the healthcare system for a patient to get immediate response to whether or not there is harm done and being done on their person. I have report after report of harm being done. And we are told, oh, they're supposed to go to the police. Or there's something in the system that says, well, we're going to get right on top of that. And even Minister Ray Bull's letter written to her from Justin Trudeau explaining what her job is only to turn around after my experience like i said i think it speaks volumes they have demonstrated better than i ever could exactly what kind of transparent government this is and when i say government i'm talking about all parties i went to all leaders all parties major parties I don't know every party in Canada. I reached out to civil liberties people, arts disability management, ombudsman, every bit of window dressing that there is in this country. I am now in the last vestige of our ability to have a voice. And the last year has been done nothing but to deliberately deny, deflect, obstruct, victimize, criminalize, and make sure not a syllable of my defense is written down in my defense. So therefore, I am going before this court on Tuesday, June 28th, mental health court, without one syllable being written down in my defense and making it look like I'm the one who's doing it and nobody gives a shit nothing so I'm not Canadian I'm not I'm not included I have not been included in any of this I've been dismissed and you're able to do whatever you want with me I'm just your plaything well, not anymore. I'm declaring myself a political prisoner, and until I get proper legal representation, I will not be leaving my house. I will not be leaving my residence, and I will not be going to that court case. I am going, I am making my property a government free zone. This is my place of security and if you come here to breach it 
in any way, shape, or form other than proper representation until I get proper, uh, you know, and I need representation before Canadian citizenship and immigration in order to get out of this fucking country. Because it's not worth the citizenship. It's, I mean, like I said, where's Mr. McCallum? Where's, where's my citizenship rights? See it on a piece of paper somewhere, but nobody else seems to think that that stands for anything. So I've got no choice but to sit here and say, I am now a political prisoner in my home address. And I will not be leaving this place, and I will not be cooperating with police, and I will not be cooperating with anybody in the law until I get my representation. And you better come in here with your guns blazing. Because the next time a cop comes near me or lays hands on me, I'm protecting myself. And I don't care if I end up dead. Because this is no way to live. You have now made me a hostage in my own home. Because I'm not safe. This medical system is a sham. This legal system is a sham. And I'm fucking done. So, hey, uh, justice ministers and that. Like I said, I'm seeking legal representation from a lawyer. A real lawyer who's going to represent me. I'm seeking political asylum from any... If there's a government out there that will take me, I need you to get in touch with me. And I'm seeking political asylum. Hey, maybe maybe, uh, Mr. Assad, maybe, maybe I'm safer in human rights going to Syria. Do you have a place for me there? Because I'm certainly not safe here in Canada. At least you're honest. At least you sit there and tell people you're a son of a bitch who doesn't give a shit about human rights. You know, better than the hypocritical Canada. I'm done. I'm no, I, I'm not a citizen. You made it clear. I'm not. I have none of these rights. So therefore, I guess I must be an illegal alien in my own country, even though I was born here. So I request proper legal representation immediately under all human rights laws and treaties while still a citizen of Canada. Cease and desist this persecution and harassment of my person immediately. And I guess uh, I, I should say goodbye now because the next time the cops touch me, I'm going to be dead. They're going to murder me, just like I said they would. Because that's what they're here to do. Get rid of the complainers. Get rid of the people who have real evidence on them. And you know what? I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. This has to end one way or another. And it either ends legally or it ends with me with a bullet. I don't give a fuck. Fuck every last one of you. You know what? You're all fucking hypocrites. And it is what it is, right? So ISIS isn't isn't promoted in... in anywhere but Europe but it is what it is is what's promoted in Canada there's no you know what this says there is no place safe in this world for anybody but hey you can keep dreaming you know the only thing that says is it's time to fucking wake up but you know what? It's not my problem anymore. I'm not part of you. So I guess if and when I take that big leap into the fucking far unknown, well, you know what? I, you know, good, good thing. Because it's better than living here. <laughs> living here under this uh, life I've been given. But isn't that exactly the point? Dehumanization. You diminished me. Well, that's your problem. You just don't know what I'm worth. You know what? That's your loss, not mine. Matter of fact, now that my eyes have been opened and I have the truth about what everything is in this world, it's never going to be a problem for me ever again. Queen Elizabeth, you are the biggest terrorist that ever existed.
you and your dynasty, and I don't, you know, you, yeah, okay, you've been getting away with it for 2,000 years, whatever the hell it is. But there's no mistake. You are the terrorist that is represented here. It's your representatives that are doing this as a privilege. So I'm glad I've been your privilege. You've been privileged to watch the entertainment. You know, it'd be really my privilege to watch you hang from a fucking rope, you bitch. Of course, that'll never happen, will it? No, people are too fucking... They're, they're entertained. Let me entertain you. You know what? Don't bother talking, because you're full of fucking shit. Every last one of you. Goodbye.